Hello viewers. In this lecture, we will study a research paper titled New Discretization of Caputo Fabrizio Derivative. This research paper was published by these three professors in 2018. So let's see what they have mentioned in the abstract. So basically, they have derived a numerical approximation to the Caputo Fabrizio differential operator using Lagrange interpolation technique. They have presented the formulas L1 and L12 using the quadratic and cubic Lagrange interpolation technique, respectively. They have solved some examples, both theoretically and numerically. In addition to this, they have also solved a nonlinear subdiffusion equation to test their theoretical findings. And their numerical results confirm the theoretical observed convergence rates. Okay, so we will study this research paper in five sections of lecture number 15. Let me also confirm this is our lecture number 15 and it's part 1. Okay, so what we are going to do in part 1 of this lecture number 15, we will study the L1 formula presented in this research paper. So let's just start from the introductory section. In this introductory section, authors have first of all given some importance of the fractional calculus and they have mentioned some relevant fields where fractional calculus can be used. Further, you can see in equation 1.1, they have presented the definition for the Caputo Fabrizio differential operator with order alpha. So it is m of alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. Note down m of alpha is considered to be a normalization factor which is in several research paper has been taken to be one. Then there is an integrant involving the first order derivative of the function and a non-singular kernel in terms of exponential function, wherein the lambda is a constant whose value is mentioned as minus alpha upon one minus alpha. Okay, so this is a definition and in this whole research paper, this definition, I mean the Caputo Fabrizio differential operator has been approximated by several numerical techniques, including the first one, L1 technique, which is our today's presentation. Okay, so let's, let's move further. In this coming paragraph, they have further emphasized the importance of the fractional calculus and fractional operators, particularly this Caputo Fabrizio derivative. They have mentioned the extensive review of the literature, wherein they have presented the application areas of Caputo Fabrizio differential operator as they say that it is a promising differentiation, differentiation operator and it is used to model several problems that arise in different fields of science and engineering including mathematical biology, physics, control systems, fluid dynamics and many, many more. Okay, so you can read uh, this literature review. I now go to section number two in which derivation of the fractional differentiation formulas is presented. So we are in today's lecture, we are basically interested in the first subsection, I mean L1 formula. So look at the interval they have considered from zero to T and then they have made a subdivision of this interval as you can see from zero to capital T. So T naught is the first initial point, the first uh, point which is 0 
and then the final point is Tm which is equal to capital T. After that a constant time step has been considered delta T or H which is equal to the length of the interval 0 to T. So length will be capital T divided by number of steps. And then they have presented the L1 formula, its derivation. And after derivation, they have obtained this formula as given in 2.3. So the derivation is uh, actually some, some steps are missing in the derivation. So that is why I have derived this method step by step. Let's go to the presentation mode to understand the derivation. Okay. So now... This is first part of lecture number 15. We will drive L1 method for the CF operator and then its MATLAB code as well. So once again, this is the Caputo Fabrizio differential operator as defined in equation 1. In equation 1, replace x by xn and you will get this equation number 2. Now in equation 2, you can see that the interval is from, integration interval is from 0 to xn. So I have broken this interval into several subintervals here and we have obtained equation number 3. In equation 4, I have used the summation notation to aid all of these integrals. So this is the compact form. Equation number 4 is the compact form where you can go back to equation number 3 if you start putting the values of this index k. Fine. Now we are going to use the forward difference caution to approximate the first order derivative that appears in equation 4. So look at this. Now in equation number 5, in equation number 5 you can see that this first order derivative in equation 4 has now been replaced by this forward difference quotient that appears in equation 5. Now the forward difference quotient has h in the denominator, the time step size. So I have taken it outside and I have obtained equation number 6. After that, the term exponential, exponential term has to be integrated. This is the only term involving this s variable. So we have equation number 7. And after that, I have used the simple power rule to integrate. And then you will get the integration. Note down that this minus lambda should be the in the denominator of this entire term. So there is a small typo here. It can be corrected. So equation 8 is obtained. After that, move this minus lambda outside of the summation sign and then use the fundamental rule of calculus to obtain equation number 9. After that, using these known relations from our previous knowledge of numerical classical numerical analysis, we will apply these relations into equation number 9 and we will obtain equation number 10. Wherein now you can see that lambda has been replaced by its value that was minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. And then some simplification will give you equation number 11. And this is what our L1 method is. So now this is our final L1 method to approximate the Caputo Fabrizio differential operator. Note down that m is considered to be 1 and lambda is minus alpha upon 1 minus alpha. Let's go to the code to see how the simulations that are performed in the research paper can be obtained in MATLAB. So now, before I open the M file, let me show you the research paper wherein they have considered some numerical examples. So I would like to show you that the first numerical example is T power N. They have presented the exact solution 3.1. Another math, another example they have chosen is cosine function, then sine function, and then exponential function. Okay. So now you can consider one of such examples. I have considered in the code second example, cosine 40, and its results or its simulations are presented by authors in table number 3. Okay, so let's move to table number 3 and now check it. In table number 3, when the step size is 0 0.1, 
3.9710 to the power minus 4 is the absolute error computed at the final mesh point. And note down in this research paper, the authors have considered 2 as the final mesh point, while the order taken by them is 0 0.1. So, in today's lecture, we are concerned with the L1 formula only. So, by L1 formula, these are the simulation results. So, we have to actually confirm these simulation results by our code. So, now let's go to the code. You can see some necessary commands on line number 10. After that, the step size 0 0.1 I have chosen. The initial value 0, final value 2 as mentioned in the research paper. After that, the x vector, the interval, and then line number 28 is a formula to compute number of steps. Alpha 0 0.1 as mentioned in table number 3 of the paper. And then normalization factor is 1. And then we have cosine 4t. So I have given here w while w is 4. So we have taken the cosine function and now this is a constant A on line number 44. And if you look at the presentation, this is what the coefficient of the scheme is. M divided by alpha times H. So this is what I have also written and assigned the name capital A on line number 44. After that, lambda value, okay, as you can see in the presentation, it's a constant. So this is this is mentioned on line number 48. After that, the subscript k starts from 1 and ends at n. This is exactly same as mentioned in the scheme. Okay, so you can also look at over here. Look, look at this term. Here k starts from 1 and ends at n. Okay, so this is what I have typed in the M file. Focus on line number 57. This is what one of the important lines in the code. This is the scheme which I had just shown you on the slide. So if you compare the terms typed in the code and written on the slide, you will find no difference. Okay, so keep comparing it. You have the difference of these two functional values and the difference of these two exponential terms. So same I have typed over here. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to find out the exact solution. So some symbols have been introduced. Just one, which is X here. And then I have found the exact solution. And if you notice on line number 69, this exact solution is basically the definition of the Caputo-Fabrizio differential operator that you saw in equation 1.1 of the research paper. So as it was written in the research paper, exactly the same way I have typed on line number 69. After that, I have converted this exact solution into double precision. And then on line number 79, we compute the absolute error at the final mesh point, that is 2 here. And then we have displayed our results. On line number 91, we will obtain the number of steps. Then we will see step size, exact solution, approximate solution by this L1 method, and then I will see the absolute error. Okay, so let's run the program and confirm the results as given in the table. So look at this. We have 20 steps. Point 0.1 is the step size, and this number is exact solution. This number is the approximate solution and the error is 3.9720 10 to the power minus 4. Let's confirm it from the research paper. Focus on the number given over here. This is the same number as I have obtained by the code designed by me. 3.9710 10 to the power minus 4. When the step size is 0 0.1, when the fractional order is 0 0.1, okay, the step size 0 0.1 and the formula used by us is L1 formula for the function cosine 4x. So the results match, the simulations are being matched with 
the results we have obtained from our code. So let's verify it when the step size is 0 0.05. So once again, let's go to the code and then I'm going to change the step size to 0 0.05 and I'm going to run the script again. To check the results, I have to go to the command window and the absolute error is nine point, approximately 9.91, 10 to the power minus 5. Let's go to the research paper and note down the error is exactly the same number as shown by the code. In this way, now you can easily simulate. You can easily simulate and you can change the fractional order 0 0.5 and you can verify these results. Okay, the numbers which are not within the bracket, they are the simulation results by the L1 formula. And then, okay, if you also uh, want to know what is R, then this is the rate of convergence. And this can be confirmed using a formula the authors have provided in their section of numerical results. So it is also not difficult to find out this rate of convergence. Maybe I, in the next lecture, I explain it a bit further. So you can now confirm rest of the simulations for this example as well as for other examples given in this research paper as long as L1 method is concerned. Let's go back to the code now. And now I would like to confirm the convergence rate. Okay. So now I am writing the step size 0 0.1 and I'm going to run the script. Look at the results on the command window. It is 10 to the power minus 4. The result is of magnitude 10 to the power minus 4. Now, if it is a second order method, you know from my previous lectures that if you are going to decrease the step size by one order of magnitude, and if the absolute error is also decre is decreasing by two orders of magnitude, it shows the second order conversions. Easiest way to compute the R, which you just saw, you just saw on in the research paper. Okay, let me once again go back to the research paper. This R value. They have presented another formula, but this one, this technique. As I explained, decrease the step size by one order of magnitude and observe the pattern of the error. If it is decreasing by two orders of magnitude, it is giving us confirmation for the second order of accuracy. So, quadratic rate of convergence. Fine. So, let's go to the code now. Okay. Note down, it was 10 to the power minus 4. Okay. So, now I decrease the... A step size to 0 0.01 that is one order of magnitude and run the script again go to the command window look at this look at this what we have got 10 to the power minus 6 two order of two orders of magnitude decreased let's confirm it further by decreasing the step size to 0 0.001 run the script again and what you should expect Yes, you are right. We should have 10 to the power minus 8. Run the script. Go to the command window and here we go. We have 10 to the power minus 8 as we expected. So, it confirms the claim of the research paper that L1 formula to approximate the Caputo-Fabrizio differential operator performs Quadratically, in other words, it's, it has a quadratic rate of convergence. The L1 formula has a quadratic rate of convergence, so it is very much true. You can confirm other simulations. So that's it for today's lecture. In my next lecture, I will explain the derivation and the MATLAB code for the other numerical schemes which are given in this research paper and in the final part, we will also solve this nonlinear subdivision equation using these techniques. I hope you understood and enjoyed the lecture. If you do so, kindly like, share and subscribe my channel. 
Thank you so much for watching the lecture.